Dr. C.V. Suesh Babu's Virtual Classroom Presence Learning and Teaching Series Introduction to Constructivism by Dr. C.V. Suresh Babu Hi friends, in this video we are going to see instructing facts about constructive learning. The topics we are going to cover in the video are meaning and definitions of constructivism, the need for constructivism, the nature of constructivist learners, the role of teachers, the nature of learning process involved in constructivism, psychologist behind the theory of constructivism, the comparison of behaviorism, cognitivism versus constructivism and also the comparison between traditional classrooms versus constructivism. To start off with the definition of constructivism. Constructivism is a learning theory found in psychology which explains how people might acquire knowledge and learn. It therefore has a direct application to education. The theory suggests that humans construct knowledge and meaning from their experiences. To explain in detail a view of learning based on the belief that knowledge isn't a thing that can be simply given by the teachers at the front of the room to the student in their desk. Students learn by fitting new information together with what they already know. Learners are the builders and creators of meaning and knowledge. Knowledge is constructed by learners through an active mental process of development. The need for constructivism. Constructivism fosters the critical thinking. It also creates the active and motivated learners. Students are able to learn through constructing their own understandings. This approach frees the teachers to make decisions which enhances and enrich the student's development. The Nature of Constructivist Learners The students are center of attention, not the teachers. Children are placed in groups. They work together to find the meaning. Each student takes on a different objective or part of the assignment or project. They become experts on their subject. Students teach one another to become experts on their piece of the puzzle. Together as a whole, the group becomes experts from one another. The teacher is a facilitator, guide on the side not mentor in the middle. The role of teachers in cognitive constructivism. Watching the students, listening the role of students, asking questions to learn about students, having the ability to observe and listen to one's students and their experiences in classroom contributes to his other ability to use a constructivist approach. A constructivist approach contributes to one ability to observe and listen in the classroom.
Now let's listen to the nature of learning process. The learning process is a collaboration method among the learners. It also has in pedagogical approaches to constructivism. Learning phases in constructivism has three stages: introductory, advanced, and expert. In introductory stage, learners have very little directly transferable prior knowledge about the skill content area. In advanced stage, learners have some prior knowledge and need more advanced knowledge to solve complex and domain specific problems. In expert stage, learners have extensive experience that can be transferred from previous phases of learning and require little guidance. It is actually a transformation of introductory to expert is equal to transition IS models to constructivism. The psychologists behind the theory of constructivism are Lev Vyajotsky, Jeram Bruna, Jean Piaget, and John Dewey. The constructivist theory can be split into two. Cognitive constructivism given by Jean Piaget and social constructivism given by Lev Vygotsky. Jean says that the concept involved in cognitive constructivism are schema, assimilation, accommodation, equilibration. The principles involved are learning is an active process rather than passive process. Learning should be whole, authentic and real to be effective. Social constructivism by Lee Wojcicki. He explains the social interaction, psychological tools like languages, and he also intellects the more knowledgeable other. Scaffolding like tutoring, the zone of proximal development involved in constructivism. Now let's have a look at Piaget cognitive constructivism. Piaget believed learning occurs by an active construction of meaning rather than by receiving it passively. He states that when we as learners encounter an experience or situation that conflicts with our current way of thinking, a state of imbalance is created. We must alter our thinking to restore the equilibrium or balance to do this we must associate it with what we already know developing the child must build cognitive structures through the use of mental maps and concept maps The concept map is used for knowledge assessment, planning and knowledge integration. The concept map is also known as schematic network cognitive map. It has the process of 
knowledge representation and providing it in map it actually contains links and notes it models structural knowledge cognitive structure which is very important for problem solving now let's see the benefits of mind map a mind map is a tool for the brain that captures the thinking that goes on inside the brain it is actually helpful in many ways for organization of thoughts it should have the basic features like central theme associations curved lines keywords proximities etc it can also be attached with images for a clear pictorial representation which is helpful for the students to understand the stages of cognitive development are first is sensory motor stage that is from birth to 2 years next we have pre operational stage from 2 years to 7 years coming up next is concrete operational stage 7 years to 11 years finally we have formal operational stage that is from age 12 to entire lifetime Now let's compare behaviorism, cognitivism and constructivism. Behaviorism focuses on what the learner does. Cognitivism focuses on the processing of the information that is how the learner organizes new information. Constructivism focuses on how the learner interprets the new information and applies to their own reality. In behaviorism the learner is reactive whereas in both cognitivism and constructivism the learner is proactive the types of learning involved in behaviorism are basic definition and explanation of concept generalization recall in cognitivism we have higher level reasoning and information processing constructivism we have higher level problem solving and critical analysis which emphasizes on real world scenario some of the examples in behaviorism classrooms are pretest comprehensive checks etc in cognitivism like corrective feedback learning strategies in correctivism examples are apprenticeship clinics collaborative learning
Now let's compare the features of traditional classroom versus the features of constructivist classroom. In traditional classroom, students work individually, whereas in constructivist classroom, students work in groups. The important information in the traditional classrooms are provided by the teacher, whereas in constructive classroom, the teacher facilitates the learning in the students. In traditional classroom, the teachers generally behave in a directive manner that is broadcasting the information to students. In constructive classroom, the teachers generally behave in an interactive manner that is mediating the environment for the students. The students of the traditional classroom are viewed as blank pages onto which the information is recorded by the teacher, whereas in constructivist classroom, the students are viewed as thinkers with emerging theories about the world. The traditional classroom is a bottom-to-up approach. The curriculum is presented from modules to whole. It actually emphasizes on the basic skills. Now, with constructivist classroom, it is a top to down approach. The curriculum is presented whole to modules. It emphasizes on concept. Traditional classroom emphasizes on the fixed curriculum, whereas constructivist classroom emphasizes on students' quest for knowledge. Traditional classroom curricular activities depend on available textbooks and reference materials. Constructive classroom curricular activities depends on primary sources available. In traditional classroom, the teachers seek the correct answer to validate the student memory. In constructivist classroom, the teachers seek the student's point of view in order to understand student learning for use in subsequent conceptions. In traditional classroom, the assessment of the student learning is viewed as separate from teaching and it is actually done through test. In constructivist classroom, the assessment of student learning is integrated with teaching and occurs through teacher observation of student at work and through exhibition and portfolios. Hope you all have enjoyed this video. We'll meet soon with an interesting topic. Until then, bye from the entire team. Take care. Have a nice day. For more tutorial videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel.